welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be making a modern glossy button like the one you see here. If you don't want to follow along with this tutorial, you can always download the PSD template from our website. There, you can find more PSD templates for logos, YouTube channel backgrounds, and more. A link is in the video description. To start off, we're going to create our document. Click File, New. Change the width to 1000px and the height to 300px. We're going to make the document resolution large so we can see what we're making easier than if it were a small button. At the end of this video, I'll go over how you can make it smaller and save it for something like a website. Here we have our new project. What we need to do is add a gradient background. To do this, we need to unlock the background layer. This can be done by holding Alt and double clicking on the background layer. Next, we're going to need to add a gradient to the background. To do this, double click the background layer and it will bring up the layer styles window. From here, click the gradient overlay style. Select the gradient editor drop down. As you see, I have a lot of gradient presets which are pre-made. You can download these presets for yourself by clicking the link in the video description. It shouldn't replace the page so you don't have to worry about losing this video. Once you've downloaded the gradient, simply click the load button and then select the file you downloaded previously. The gradients will be added to the list. For the background gradient, I'm going to select a dark gray gradient that won't overpower the button. Once you have selected the gradient, simply press OK and then OK. The next thing we're going to do is create a shape. To do this, select the rounded rectangle tool. This can be done by right clicking the shape tool and then clicking rounded rectangle tool. Once you've done that, change the radius to 45 pixels. This will give the shape larger corners. When creating the shape, click a little from the top left and then drag down to the bottom right. Continue to drag the shape downward so that the bottom corners aren't visible within the canvas. We're going to need to remove them to allow the button to have sharp bottom corners. To do this, I'm going to select the subtract from shape area button and then draw another shape over the previous one, keeping the same distance from the sides. The next thing we're going to need to add is the shape styles. To do this, double click the shape layer and it will bring up the layer styles window. For the button shape, we're going to add a gradient overlay and an inner glow. Enable and select the gradient overlay style. Click the gradient to bring up the gradient editor. The gradient I'm going to select is going to be a bit lighter than the background. This one looks good. The next style we're going to add is an inner glow. Enable and select the inner glow style. We're going to change the color to white and the size to around 20. Once you've done that, click OK. The next thing we're going to add is the text. Create a new layer by pressing Ctrl, Shift and N. Select the text tool. Click within the shape and type the text. For this tutorial, I'm going to use the text button. Select the text and then change the font. I'm going to use the font Impact. Increase the size to around 200. And then select the Move tool. Select the whole canvas by pressing Ctrl A on your keyboard. And then vertically and horizontally position the text. Next, we're going to add the text styles. Double click the text layer to bring up the layer styles. For the text, we're going to add a gradient overlay, inner shadow, and drop shadow. Enable and select the gradient overlay. I'm going to select a dark gradient, darker than the background shape. This one looks good. I'm going to reverse the gradient to make the darkest color at the top. Next, enable the drop shadow. I'm going to change the blend mode to overlay, the color to white, the angle to about negative 50 degrees, the distance to 1, and the size to 1. This gives us a nice outline around the text. Next, enable and select the inner shadow. We're going to add some depth to the text to make it look like it's pressed into the shape. Make sure the angle is set to negative 50 degrees. Distance is at 5 pixels and the size is at 10 pixels. And we're done with the text. Click OK. 
Now we're going to add the gloss. To do this, select the shape area by holding control and clicking on the shape icon. Create a new layer. Select the pen tool. Click above at the top right of the canvas and click and hold again near the bottom left under the canvas. Pull out the handle by holding the click and dragging your mouse outwards. Release the click. Join the two points together by creating more points outside of the top of the canvas. Make sure the points are outside the canvas. Now the points are joined, right click within the canvas and then select make selection. For the operation, we're going to use subtract from selection. This is going to create the selection for the gloss. Now select the gradient tool. Select the black to white preset. Hold shift and click near the bottom of the shape. Hold and drag the click upwards towards the top of the shape. Release the click and you should see a gradient of black to white. Make sure the white is on top and the black is at the bottom. Change the layer mode to screen and the overlay opacity to around 40%. Deselect by pressing Ctrl plus D on your keyboard. Now we have our gloss. Next, we're going to add some highlights to the top and bottom of our shape to create the modern look. Select the brush tool. Right click on the canvas and select the soft round preset. Increase the size to around 150 pixels. Create a new layer with the shortcut keys Ctrl, Shift and N. Make sure you have white set as your foreground color. Make sure you have selected the shape area by holding down Ctrl and clicking on the shape icon. With the brush tool, click near the center bottom of the button. Hold and drag right, lowering the brush. Do the same on the other side. Change the layer mode of the highlight to overlay and the opacity to around 50%. Now we're going to use that for both the top and bottom highlights. With the highlight layer selected, press Ctrl J to duplicate the layer. Press Ctrl T with the duplicated layer selected, and then click the bottom center point and drag it to the top. Double click to confirm the transformation. You may want to lower the opacity of the second highlight to around 30%. Now we have our button. If you want to make it smaller for purposes such as uploading it to the web, click Image, Image Size, you can reduce the image size here. Making sure you have constrained proportions enabled, change the width from 1000px to 100px. This would be a good size for a button. Make sure you have the scale styles selected and then press OK. Most likely, you'll want to hide the background layer so we can have the corners we created on the button. This can be done by hiding the background layer. Now you're free to save. Click File, Save. Make sure you change the format to PNG. This will allow you to keep the transparency around the image. And we're done. As always, check out my website aqual.com for more tutorials like this, as well as other templates available for download. Don't forget to thumbs up this video if you liked it, add it to your favorites, and leave any questions or comments below.